Hi, uh, my name is Sohel, I'm from Property Group, and today I would like to talk about functional programming. It's something that has been a trend, people talking about it, it's a new boss. Uh, if you come here from Pascal, people love to talk about this thing, but uh, to be honest, Swift is not a functional, but it's flexible enough to play, that let us to play a little bit of functionality that Haskell brought to the world. So, let's get started. Oh, before actually I go, I just want to tell you guys, I'm not expert on any of this. I'm, it, it just, I'm learning at the same time, just want to share whatever I learned. And, let's go. So, what is functional programming? Uh, it's a pro programming paradigm, same as the object-oriented paradigm. You have objects that have a bunch of methods inside of it. Inside object-oriented, uh, the classes are the king. In functional programming, functions are the king. And uh, this programming paradigm, uh, everything has to be declarative and in a very expressive manner. Uh, and it's more of a coding style, how you want to approach the project, how you want to make it, uh, how to write a very clean codes. It's more of a mindset, yeah, if I could say. And uh, it's pretty much is all about how to write nice and clean code. Nothing more about that. Uh, right. So how do we do functional programming? Everything in functional programming has to be written in a very expressive way. It has to be clean, has to be nice, so it's very readable format. And so whatever we have has to have very nice input and we have an output. It shouldn't be in as an imperative programming. This is an example of non-functional. Everything is like do this, do this, and then that, etc., etc. It's an imperative program. What functional program wants us to do is to be kind of claim you have functions for every single thing you want to do and they have to be having input and out. This is not exactly real, pure functional. So as a pure functional programming, we have to make sure there's no side effect. What I mean by side effect is like the previous example I had, printing function side, which is I'm talking to, it's like I'm asking some other uh, helper method to do something for me, which has nothing to do with the grading because the grading function wants to just append the hello words uh, in, into to a string. So a more functional way would be grading, accept the parameter, and return back the parameters. It's very simple. Yes. <laughs> Next is we have to use a higher. Uh, no, we have. We don't have to use, but we have. Uh, uh, ability to use higher order functions as in Swift, the uh, functions are the first, you have to acknowledge them as the first class citizen inside so the functional programming. So, some of the system higher order functions are uh, in the array can be reduced, map, filter, flat map. Uh, I'll go to just to do a simple demo if anyone not familiar with uh, this higher order functions. So we have our array and we can map through it instead of doing the normal for loop which would be this one. This is a simple way I want to map through every single array and add one into this array. So if you look at it, it would be very nice. Get two, four, five, six. And we have array, we can uh, filter it to look for exactly uh, all those numbers that are bigger than five. And get six and seven, we also have array dot reduce, which takes the initial value, you can say, uh, you can put a plus as to combine them together, and sorry, initial is uh, you have to put a number or, or any string you want to put, and here as a plus to combine them. So you can combine all the value together, and it result and you just put a print. 
So we've got 31, and last is uh, flat map, which it would, if you have a multi-dimensional array, like an extra something like this, it, it's useful to use flat map to give you uh, a 2D array. Functional programming is our query function, which returns back a function to you. Uh, for example, <coughs> this function is an at, which takes an input and returns back a function, which also requires another input of the integer. So, for instance, we have uh, we're creating our own variable, which is at two, and we add a number two and a result, which can use at two and pass another, and we can add three to pass a function over there and use it to plus each other and get it out to far. I guess I go to detail a bit of this one. Yeah, how do you do it? So, say you have a function, we call it curry. And we have an input integer and it turn back here. Integer, uh, sorry, function. So, over here, I would go for a simple way like return back a function. So I would say return func, which would take an input, we'll call it b, and return back an integer. And over here I can call return function. So from outside, I can just call this one array 2, uh, adding. If you look at the adding, is actually, this is a function. So I cannot print it. I have to call adding and add another uh, parameter into it, like uh, tree. So we should get a file over here. Or you can actually use it like this, like a at right next to it, two and three. So I can even make this one simpler. I can just put it like a plus b, turn, sorry. I can make the whole thing even simpler like this in a very short format. A plus, this dollar sign zero is actually this function, which I have a name. In. So curry can return back a function that we do something else for us. This can be useful when you are uh, dealing with a, a, like a factory method that requires to do something first, and you use that factory method to add on more function into it. But uh, it depends on your use case. It might not be very practical. But in functional programming, we talk about this a lot. Just want to show it to you how to do it in Swift. It doesn't mean we really you have to use it. But maybe it makes more sense in a uh, Haskell or other programming language. This is the query function. Next, composite function. Uh, it's this function is act actually accepting function as its parameters. It can be very useful. Uh, let's say you are, for for example, in here I have a. Uh, variable double, which you, whatever parameter you get in, which is dollar zero, times two it, and you also have another function at one, which dollar zero and plus one it. 
then the composite function you can combine the double and add one, and it also has an additional parameter to the end. This function can combine everything together and return back the value to you. Let's go to the demo. So have a composite function. We'll call it uh, font A and for simplicity, let's just say this who this is a function here. You return it uh, as its own function, which accepts a parameter integer and return back a parameter. We have a function B. Uh, which accept the same thing, integer, and return back the integer. And I want this function to return back me, uh, or just be a very simple, or uh, yeah, let's, let's go like this first. So, this parameter compost requires to have a function A and function B exactly the same thing. And it will return back to a function which accepts uh, an integer and return back an integer to you. Sounds a little bit confusing, but I would just try to be as easy as is possible. So let's say function A, whatever result it gets, it needs to call function B. And function B requires to get the value which is getting from this one. This is called dollar sign zero. Turn. That's it. You call it inside a closure. <coughs> oh, yeah, but you have to call it as it's escaping. Escaping. Oops. So uh, let's say I have a function. Uh, I would say whatever number I'll, I will give it to you, double it. Double, double function. And I can create the function, in, like an inline function as a variable. So let, let me do it. I would say that this function would be something like this. Then uh, that function, which whatever value it gets, times two it. I also have another function, plus 1. Whatever value you get, plus 1. So let's put them together. Compose function. I would say my first function is double function. Double function. And my second function is a plus 1. Plus 1. So this compose actually return back to another function which requires to accept an integer, which I would say, let's say, 3. This will give you 8. Sorry, I think I went the other way. Yep. So, this function, first it will go to function A, which is uh, double the number, and then it will go to function B, which is plus 1 the number. This is a little bit more advanced, but uh, I can go through how to make this thing a little bit simpler in the next slide by functional chaining. Uh, next important thing about functional programming is avoid mutability. If in the Swift way, it's very easy as long as we're using the struct classes and. We have to avoid any, using any sort of mutable variable. If you want to update a uh, value from an array, it's better to create a new one. Or it's also good to use a node tree. If, if you know it, it's more efficient rather than keep on creating new array. And the last method of functional programming, which is also a very important method, which is called functional chaining. Imagine you have a function that is taking students as a parameter, and you want to look for, find the last year students, and then from there you call the sort results, and then from there you want to call the clean printing function, which would, uh, would be the final result. It's kind of hard to look in this way, which is the, the custom operator is used for in Swift, 
we can define our own custom operator, which we say this is a student and then find the last year and so on and so on, which is part of the functional composition of the, this lesson. Let me just do it before I go conclusion. So I have. Okay, so this is my array, and I have just a number as a sample. I have a function to sort the array, remove duplicate, uh, remove first, uh, reverse array, and this is for duplicate array. And this is how I call it. Uh, the same, kind of similar to the one in the example. Reverse array, remove first, and remove duplicates, and sort array. So, in order to make this one nicer, we have to go write our own precedence. Uh, let's say I want to go for uh, this kind of style. So keep on going and going. So my first one is result. I want to pass the array and pass that one to the sort array. And I pass that one to remove duplicate. I pass remove duplicate to remove first. And remove first to serve. I feel this is more readable, but if you have a lot of a custom operator, of course, it's going to be very confusing to look in who's, who wrote this function first. So let's write a custom operator. Uh, this is an infix operator. So you can say infix operator, and I define it like this. Function in fix. Oh, sorry. Function this. Um, so the first thing is the uh, left variable, which I'm getting. I would call it just a value. It's a integer. What is it? Right. And next is a function. A custom function, I'll just call it function A. And this will get an array of integer and return back the array of integer. This will return. So this will take integer and then also we have a function that know how to handle this integer and also return back a very nice integer for us all right uh, in fact if you don't mind you can go for uh, generic function if it, anyone familiar with generic functions if not if I just continue this way I lost the audience. <laughs> Turn. Okay. <clears throat> actually, there's no need for looking back another function. So this is a generic function which integer accept a value and have a function which accept the same kind of array of integer, return back integer, and that one also return back the value one. So if you go left 
to the right, if you want to read it. This would pass to the value, and then sort array as a function. And the return also going to be, and the return is going to be the left side for the right side. And so on, you keep on continuing. Left side is going to be answered, and then come adding to the function to the right side until you get the result. And that's all. And that's it for functional programming. It's a little bit confusing. It's a little bit confusing. I, I know I, I, I had too much advanced work, but the thing is that I don't think functional programming has any place in the Swift at the moment because it's not created with the uh, Swift. It's came with other languages. But at some point, we can follow some of the practice, good practices that functional programming brings, like a uh, not query function, but I don't think it's a, any, any good use case for us. But uh, functional chaining or how clean our code should be looked like in a function, have a clean, nice input and nice output, not any more side effects around it. And that's it. Uh, this is the source if you guys are interested to find out more about functional programming Swift. So, any questions? Yes. One of the things about functional programming languages is that they have efficient data structures yes. for functional programming. Like languages like Clojure, Pascal will have data structures that allow you to do sharing, for example. So when you create new instances, structure sharing. Structure sharing, yeah. So when you create new instances, most of the structure is shared. So your memory user doesn't go out of the roof. Okay. But with Swift, that is going to be quite painful because whenever time you call map or reduce, for example, you create a new instance. Mm -hmm. And when you have arc in, in play here, then you have routine release, routine release, routine release happening all the time for these for these objects. You don't actually have structural, structural sharing. So wouldn't that make using wouldn't that make functional programming in general quite inefficient if you do it all everywhere all the time? No, it depends what part of the functional program you want to use. I would say only like you know, for part of your app, not the whole thing you replace it with the functional program because it, it, at the end makes it harder to read. And structure sharing, it, most of the part in the iOS I believe is already doing that. Like if you try to write, write your own link, link list uh, for array, I believe array is more, the current Swift array is more efficient rather than you writing your own link list to try to do the sh structure sharing for you. Uh, there's actually benchmark for you, uh, I was searching for the same structure sharing. I believe overall it's good to use partially, not the whole thing of the app, because I don't think it really belongs to this Swift programming. Any yeah. more questions? <laughs> Thank you very much.